All right, guys, we are back for another day. Uh, today is day 18 of the 66 day challenge on how to have a productive business in real estate. Now, you've heard me mention the 135 or GPS um, before. Well, now today we're going to be doing it. And this plays a part into the 411, um, your 30, 60, 90. Uh, this is a great system on how to, you know how I was telling you before about the, um, the 30, 60, 90, you want to stay to the core items. Same thing with the 411. Well, this is the other half of it. This is the to-do list, somewhat of a to-do list, not a tedious to-do list, but these are the action items that is what's going to get you to get to your goal. So GPS actually stands for one goal, which is here. You got your three priorities and then you have five strategies for every priority. Okay. And then you have your bonus stuff of what you're going to do that week, but we're not concentrating on that. We're just going to do here. So when you put your items in, your GPS should be specific. It should be measurable, obtainable, relevant, and time-based. Okay. Very important. So what should we put in for our goal? Okay, let's say it's lead generation. Okay, I am getting an average of one listing per month. I want to increase that to five or six. Okay, so increase listings. Oh, why is that not clicking? I'm typing, but it's not clicking. Oh, yeah, that's right. Technical difficulties from the person who uses copy books. Bear with me one second. There we go. All right. Share screen. And where are we at? I think it's this one. All right, there we go. All right. Crisis averted. Listings to five. And I can also do a put in there. I want to increase my listing appointments. All right. So I want to get five a month now. All right. It's an easy one, right? So what are going to be our top three priorities of how to get to these listings? Now, since we're focusing on listings, these are going to be called lead sources. <clears throat> so my first one, if I have three lead sources that I want to master to get to five listing appointments per month, what's the number one? And we've spoken about this before. It's your database. Your database should be the first one. So we're going to put database. That's the easy one. Now, everybody else has different things. Hey, Mike, I pay $10,000 to Zillow. Is that really lead generating? You're basically just paying for something. This would be something that is, you know, that you're succeeding at. I would save the pay per clicks, your ad, anything you're paying for. I would kind of put that to the side, make it extra. Don't worry. That's like a set it and forget it kind of an item. But what's the most popular one? Expired for sale by owners. All right, let's put that in there. Expired and FISBO. All right. So now the third one. Believe it or not, this should have been number two, but everyone always forgets about it. What is the one of the number? What is the one of the easiest ways to get a listing appointment besides your database? Instead of me calling people, how awesome would it be if people came to me? Like if I was doing new construction, I'm just sitting there. They're not doing anything. I may make a couple phone calls, but people are walking in after seeing their signs. Open houses. That's what we want. Open houses is a huge source for listing appointments. Now, I'm going to get a lot of people right there saying, Mike, no, this is a good way of getting buyers. People wanting to sell their house is not, are not going to come through an open house. So I'm not saying who's right or wrong. 
I fell in love with this idea my first year in real estate. And it has always remained the same. If you calculate and you really do your due diligence on who these people are, believe it or not, 67% 67 of the people that walk through your open house are possible sellers. Number one category is your nosy neighbors. These are the people that have been driving all week, seeing your open house directionals. I'm like, I got to go see what that house looks like and compare it. If they had no intention of selling their house, they would not even step foot in there. But they had the curiosity. It was like, wait a minute. This house looks like this and it's going for, I could get 500,000 then for my house. I might want to sell. That's putting that seed in your head. Okay. And then the other big category are the people that actually are coming to maybe buy that house. They were intrigued about buying that house, but they have a house that they have to settle or sell to buy this property. So whether they're upgrading from a twin or a row home to a single, or maybe they're downsizing from a single and they want to go into a condo. So believe it or not, 67% of the people that go through your open house, if you ask the right questions and get the right dialogue, they're looking to sell. So this is a great source of uh, open houses or for, for leads, for listings. All right. So now we got to go to the five strategies. All right. We got the goal. We got the three priorities. Now we got to do the five strategies. Okay. We're going to piece this together, but in no way should your 135 or your GPS be etched in stone in the time frame that we're doing it right now. This needs to take some time. You need to digest it. Whoever is a part of this needs to digest it as well. You need to break it. You need to try to find a way that this is going to fail. So this way you can change it again. But for today's purposes, we're going to put this stuff in here. So the first thing we want to do for our database is to fill it. We always want to continue filling our database. Okay. The more people we have in our database, the more chances that we're going to have of getting a listing appointment, okay? But the people that we allow to go into our database, we don't want the person who's going to give us a bunch of cards, you know, coming through here, and well, I'm just going to put this person in my database. No, it's about relationships. You have to gain, you have to be welcomed into my database, okay? Now we have to have a system on how we're going to communicate with our database, you know, in reference to emails, videos I'm sending out there, pop buys, gifts, open um, um, uh, happy hours and stuff like that. So what we want is called a 36 touch. 36 touch stands for um, three touches per month, whether it's an email, a direct mail, a phone call, stuff like that. But these items should be engageable. Okay. Do I need to send the Philly schedule? Do I need to send the Eagle schedule? Of course, send that, but just don't send that. Well, Mike, I'm going to send my business card too. No, no, no. Send something that they're going to read with it. Put a newsletter in there. Put something that is in relation to the area that they're living in, whether it's a market activity report based on what, what, happen what what's listing in that area what's sold in that area or if your geographic form your database you have a, a bunch of people that are from cinnamon center or mayfair what's going on in that area what do they need to know about is another wawa coming up or something like that have them engage it so you want to get their attention which you got their attention with the eagles magnet or the phillies magnet now i'm going to inform them but the biggest thing is to give them a reason to call you back by the way, I'm having a special free market analysis for the next 30 days. Or if you refer someone to me, we have a contest. Check with your broker if you do any contest rules. There's certain words that you need to put in there, like percentages and stuff like that. But these are just items that you need to have here. So with that 36 touch, well, we, we got three other strategies. All right, what else can I add in here? Okay. During this time period, this 90 days that I want to do this for, I'm going to invite everybody to a shredding event. Okay, good. Put that in there. Shredding event. Um, 
have a sponsor, have a, you know, someone to help offset some of your costs. I want to have an event. It doesn't have to be a trading event. It could be any kind of event. Uh, you can partner with your chamber of commerce and do something, uh, whether, you know, depending on what holiday it is, Halloween or anything like that. But you get the idea of it. You're going to fill these based on, you know, how much business am I expecting that this is, how many listings am I expecting to come out of this category? And you have to be honest with yourself because at the end of the year, you're going to say to yourself, well, Mike, 67% of my business came from, or I'm sorry, 72% of my business came from my database. Okay. That's a proven track record there. But now my next category over here is expired and for sale by owners. How many expired and for sale by owners did you convert into sales or listing appointments last year? Well, Mike, I had two listings and one of them sold. All right, they're really not good numbers. So we definitely need to, you know, strengthen this up. We need to put strategies in here. So the first strategy for any expired or for sale by owner is the content. Okay. We want platforms. So the reason I say platforms is because back in the day when I first started lead generating, we were given, uh, I think our MLS system at that time was called Blue. And we had this really thick white pages book. It was called a cold directory. And we had to look up our information from there. So needless to say, we were arriving in the office about 6, 630, getting our expired list and getting ready to call by eight o'clock. Time consuming, right? Well, let's fast forward now you know, to, to today where there are so many platforms out there. There's, uh, if I'm not mistaken, there's Red X Vulcan, there's uh, My Plus Leads, there's um, Mojo. There's just so many out there. But you want to get your information directly from a data communication company. So everybody says, hey, Mojo, I'm going to go Mojo. Mojo's not a data communication company. They hire a data communication company like My Plus Leads. Mojo is famous for their dialing system. So you can actually dial three people at one time, their headsets, and you know their information is just as good, but they're the icing on the cake. They have more bells and whistles to offer than the My Plus Leads. So you might be able to get My Plus Leads as a little bit of a cheaper price, but you're not getting the bells and whistles. So it all depends on what you want. So platforms is number one. We want either Mojo, we want a dialing system, whatever. We want to have that ready to go. Okay, great. Well, I need to know what to say. Okay, so we got to have the right scripts. Scripts and role play. This is really important when you're doing the expires and for sale by owners because 15 minutes prior to you start making a phone call, you want to call, you want to practice. You want to practice with your accountability partner. You want them to throw some ob uh, objections at you. You can even give them objections. You know, I, I got stumped last night. I got stump, stumped yesterday when I was doing expires on commission and also length of contract. Throw that at me. And then you're going to feel better about yourself. You're going to get the, all the ums out. You're going to get the, the hesitations out. And this way, you're just going to roll through it. Now, you also got to practice your script because you don't want to sound like one of those um, speaking fast kind of people. You, you want to slow your roll. You want to be able to mirror and match the person that you're talking to on the phone. You're going to talk different to somebody like a young kid compared to an 89-year-old lady. So you always want to mirror and match uh, the tonality of the person you're communicating uh, when you have your headset on. All right. So when you're practicing your scripts, am I using the same script for the expired that I'm using for, for sale by owners? Am I using the same script for places that I'm calling in Mayfair compared to the places that I'm calling North Wildwood? No, you're going to change it up, over, up a, a little bit. You also want to not sound like the rest of the pack. So if you're calling new expireds, I guarantee you, they're probably going to get about anywhere from 15 to about 50 phone calls, depending on where they're located on agents saying that why they need to list with them and nobody else. So if you're making your calls for new expired, you have to do it early and you have to go outside the box sometimes. So let me give you a perfect example. I'm not going to get into the whole script. So let's say I'm calling an expired, a normal call that I hear from other agents. Hey, 
I saw that your property came up as an expired. Are you looking to put your house back on the market? That is such a negative start right there. How would you, nobody wants to feel that they're missing out or that they did something wrong. Most of these people don't even know their house is off the market and you're calling them at eight o'clock in the morning for a new expired. Oh, and by the way, that's a new category. Um, new expireds. So when I'm calling these people, especially at eight o'clock or seven 30 or nine o'clock in the morning or even 10 o'clock or whatever, I'm changing it up a little bit. I'm putting the power back in their lap. I'm saying to them, Hey, Jim, it's Mike Fitzpatrick over Keller Williams. I saw that you took your property off the market over on 1234 Main Street. I'm just calling to see, are you planning on interviewing agents to get your house sold? Shit, you can interview agents? I just, I thought we were going to use one agent. We can, we can interview more than one? Holy crap. Uh, I took the property off the market. I didn't even know my property was off the market. That's what they're thinking in their head. So you're making them think. So you're taking that person who already had seven phone calls and are hanging up on them. No, I don't want to list. No, I don't want to list. It's all negative. But then all of a sudden I throw that at them. I got them thinking now. And that's the same thing with the for sale by owners. Let's jump into that. New for sale by owner. Now, new for sale by owner, they're, they're oh, like, everybody's coming to me. Everybody's coming to me. Yeah, and you're getting that agent that's saying, hey, this is Mike Fitzpatrick. I'm with Keller Williams. I've been a licensed agent for 20 years. I got all these awards. When do you plan on using an agent? You know, you're going to get hung up on every single time. So mine, and if you do use my script, I recommend you signing up for the coaching and learning it verbatim. The first thing I always say is, hi, this is Mike Fitzpatrick over at Keller Williams Real Estate. I do not want to list your house right off the bat. What the hell are you calling me for that? The reason I'm calling, well, you, you don't want to use a real estate agent. You're doing it by yourself, right? Well, yeah. I'm like, okay. Well, so I just was picking up my sign that I got under contract that we went to settlement on. And I, I actually made a wrong turn. And when I made that wrong turn, I saw your for sale sign. And I'm like, well, Jim, if you don't mind me asking, how long have you been selling it by yourself? Well, I've been selling it for about two weeks. Oh, two weeks. Okay. All right. I like to schedule an appointment today at five o'clock to come out and take a look at your property. Oh, you have a buyer? No, I, I have buyers, but I don't know if they're the right fit for your property. So I would like to see what you have available. Well, there's some pictures online. I'm like, that's great, but I want to see everything. And I also want you there because I'm going to ask you some questions about the house so I can get a better feeling so I can sell this house for you. Well, I don't want to list the house. I'm like, I'm not here to list the house. I'm here to want to see your house. Uh, no, nah, have a buyer. If you have a buyer, you can come by at five o'clock. I'm like, let me ask you this question. If I was a buyer and I called you up and I said, I wanted to see the house at five o'clock, would you let me in? Well, yeah, sure. Okay, great. So you're going to let a complete stranger in that you didn't qualify them financially and to make sure they're not an ax murderer, but yet you won't let me that has been in this business 20 plus years that have just sold the property in the area that has already told you, I don't want to list your property. All I want to do is look at it. Okay. Five o'clock is good. Now I'm not going to get into the rest of the script because the rest of the script is to create doubt in their formula in their algorithm. Remember how I told you that about that before about the one plus three equals five. That is their formula. And the one thing you never want to tell a for sale by owner is that you're doing something wrong. You can show them, but also be solution-based. Okay. And we can get into that later. That's a whole new topic, but that is our third category. No expires. Okay. Well, what's the next one? Well, the next one should be easy. If I have new expires and for sale by owners, why not old ones? Why would I want to call an old expired or an old for sale by owner. What is an old for sale by owner? An old for, for sale by owner is somebody who's been on the market maybe 40 plus days and they're having issues and maybe you can help them. Of course, your script is going to change for that for sale by owner. When you call them, you're going to come off as, hey, Jim, this is Mike Fitzpatrick. Um, can you tell me a little bit more about your for sale by owner? Yeah, we've been, you know, we're, we have it listed for 475,000. How long have you been on the market? How long have you been trying to sell it? About 60 days now. I'm like, what do you think the problem is? I don't know. These people are crazy 
Okay. If I admit no, they're not buying in this area, the, the market's horrible. Jim, in your direct area, in your five block radius, there were 10 properties that went under contract in the last 40 days and 90% of them went to settlement already. So no, it's still selling. Can I stop by and take a look at your property? Maybe I can see what's going on with the property, see what's wrong. Well, I really don't want to list with an agent right now. I'm not going to bring any contracts. I just want to sit down and help you. I mean, you want to get your property sold, right? Well, I'm offering you tips on how to get it sold. And it could be anything as easy as a offering a seller's disclosure for them, telling them what type of flyers to get, how to spruce up their house, you know, the selling points. Because when they leave that for sale by owner, it's not like they're going home. They're going to go with their agent to other properties. And if you don't give them something to remind them about your house, they've already forgot about it. And the same thing with old expires. Old expires are great. So when I have a client that's focused in one area, so let's just say they're, they're focused in, um, let's say, Sewell, New Jersey. So Sewell, New Jersey is a big area. But let's say they take like one specific area and say, okay, Mike, this is the development I want. Got about 300 homes here. There's a couple of cul-de-sacs. It's great. Kids are riding around their bicycles. They got the basketball net up there. This is awesome. This is the development I want to live in. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go back a year to see if there was any expires. If there are, I'm going to vet them, of course. I'm going to make sure they didn't sell the property because agents are lazy. So if you call an expired, they could have, they could have settled that the agent could have been, you know, hey, I'm not going to put this in. I'm just going to let this expire. I don't know why. Um, but that does happen. So when you do get that expired, here's my script. Ring, ring. Hey, Jim, what's up? How are you doing? It's Mike Fitzpatrick over at the Mike Fitzpatrick team at Keller Williams. Good. What's going on? I want to see if you can help me out with a problem. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Well, what do you got? He's like, look, I got this couple and they have two kids and they're getting ready to have another kid. Um, and they really like your development. They really like it. And we saw everything that was on the market on the MLS and they didn't really like it. So I saw at one time, maybe about five months ago, you were trying to sell your house. Yeah, we decided to stay, Mike. We decided that, you know, there was really nothing out there. Okay, great. If you don't mind me asking, where were you going to move to? Well, we were actually going to head to the Poconos. I was looking at a job transfer. Um, we did do the job transfer. I do travel back and forth. Oh, so you travel about an hour and a half to two hours a day. Yeah. Well, if I could show you that there was something affordable in your price range and that met your criteria, would you still be interested in selling the house? Well, Mike, no, it seems like a lot of headache. Okay, one more question, I'll let you go. And I really appreciate the information that you're giving me. And I know you have a really nice development. But even if we were to get you your price, you wouldn't still move to the Poconos. Well, Mike, yeah, if I got my price, I'd move. Okay, great. Let me come over and take a look at your property. And boom, there it is. That is how you get it in there. You know, there's no script that I've seen that says that. There are scripts out there that thousands and thousands of agents are using because they don't want to change it up to make it more personal to them. You're going to see all types of scripts from Brian Buffini, Mike Ferry, Tom Ferry, all these great guys, all great scripts. Change them up a little bit. Make them you, but follow the algorithm. When you're creating your own scripts or you're changing a script up a little bit, there's a class out there called language of sales. It'll tell you to slow your roll, to focus on certain words, use tie downs. Let me give you a perfect example of one. If I'm calling my database and I want to know if they have any referrals to me, am I saying to you, I want you to pay attention to this. If I'm saying to you, do you know of anybody looking to sell? I'm going to get a pretty good percent of no, because I asked a yes or no question. When you ask a yes or no question, you're giving that person to end that conversation. You're giving them a chance to end that conversation. So let's change it up around. Let's use the same sentence, but instead of, do you know of anyone looking to sell? Jim, if you don't mind me asking, who do you know that's looking to sell right now? I guarantee you, with the market the way it's going on today, with the amount of people that people know today, they know of somebody looking to buy or sell, whether it's in another state, whether it's on our block, whatever. 
But if I say, who do you know, your cogs are moving, they're thinking, well, yeah, Sally is looking to sell her house or Sally has been on the market with this agent for about two months now and she hasn't gotten anywhere. That's a lead for you. That's a lead for the old expires or your database or whatever. And then you're going to come up with another fifth strategy, you know, and that could be anything. Now we got open houses. How often do you want to do an open house? I want to do an open house once a week. Okay. Weekly. Well, I need an open house system. This is going to be fun. How much time do we have here? <laughs> Do you know what the system of having an open house, the way I was taught, by the way, when I was watching TV and seeing the, the original franchise that was out there was the Century 21 with the gold jacket and they had the, uh, the, uh, the post sign and they took it from, you know, active and they put it under contract or sold, you know, stuff like that. Um, open houses was a huge source for listing agents and also buyer's agents to get more clients. There was no internet in the 70s, 80s. Um, but now, it, it, so these people, they worked hard for their listings. And there's been quite a few agents that I've reached out to over the years, like Pat Kelly, Nancy Allett, uh, Mike McCann. I mean, these are just some of the heavy hitters. Uh, that have done the geographic farm, the open house the right way. And they said, you have to have a system. And I didn't learn this system until about two years into real estate. My first year, I was watching everybody else. And everybody was like, if the open house is on a Sunday, they were maybe putting the rider out there that there was an open house on Saturday, put the directionals out Sunday morning, do your balloons, put that out there. And then go to your convenience store, either get donuts or pepperoni and cheese and your sign-in sheet and all that stuff. So not only have I talked to the people, spoken to the people that have done it a detailed way, but I've also upped my game into reaching out to new construction companies to see how they get their people out there, how they get their numbers and how they track them. And at the end of the day, we have a system that goes from Monday to Saturday just for the open house. That's only going to be about three or four hours on Sunday. So wait, Mike, you're going to work Monday to Saturday on the open house that you're only going to have four hours on. Yeah. Yeah. But I guarantee you, I'm probably going to get out 30 people in that open house. Okay. Now there, there is guidelines for this and the systems that go anywhere from marketing phone calls my call in the neighborhood promoting this to my database i'm also sending the link to the open house to my sellers who are sell selling their house i want them to send it to their database um, i'm reaching out to agents of my listing that have sold in that area so for agents that are listening to this you have the mls if you look if you do a radius around your area and do settled properties, they'll come up and you'll have two agents. You'll have the listing agent and the buyer's agent. Get all the buyer's agent's information. Send them an email about the PDF uh, of the property and then call them. Promote the property. Hey, Jim, first I want to congratulate you on your recent settlement that you had on 123 Main Street. Oh, yeah, thanks, Mike. My, my broker didn't even say thank you. You're, you're saying thank you. Okay, well, you trying to recruit me? No, I'm not trying to recruit you. You sold the property where I have a listing coming up and we're doing going to be doing an open house. And I just wanted to see if you still have buyers for that area. Well, Mike, I do. do I tell you what, if you have a buyer for my property, I'm going to throw in a $3,000 selling bonus for a full price offer or a $1,500 for an accepted offer. Do you think you can bring your clients through? Mike, I'm definitely going to bring my clients through. That's how you do it. For each category, whether you're doing your, your circle prospecting or calling the neighborhood, uh, whatever. And this is a great opportunity if you're nurturing a for sale by owner in that area or an expired. Hey, Jim, it's Mike Fitzpatrick. I know you said you didn't want to list your house. I know you said you were happy with your area, but we're having an open house. And I just want to see if you want to change your mind. Why don't you come on out just to take a look to see how well I work? 
And then if you still don't want to sell, that's fine. Same thing with the for sale by owner. Hey, I know I said I didn't want to list the house. I know you're still on the market, but I want to show you how I'm going to get this property under contract in the next four days. And if I can give that same system to you, these are all ways to increase people to come to your open house. Okay. And then you're going to come up with the other strategies, like whether you do a food truck, um, when you, don't focus too much on the, there's two, there's two thoughts on this. Okay. You're selling the house. Okay. If I'm going to do food, the donuts, the crackers, pepperoni, don't bring it, get rid of it. The, the little dollar 99, that's got the little 15 cupcakes in there. Now you procrastinated. If you plan this the right way, you could have your lender or somebody help you with the cost. And it really doesn't cost that much to have it catered. The messier the food, the better. If I'm doing barbecue chicken, I want to make sure I have plates. I want to make sure I have a napkin. But the most important thing I want to have is someone somewhere for them to sit and eat so they can't go anywhere. And I can talk to them and I can interview them. And this is a perfect that we've done barbecues before we've done hamburgers or grills. We, we do all kinds of stuff, but if you're going to do it, do it right. Okay. One of the big things now, I don't want to get too much into this because you know, time wise, but one of the things is that you also want to interview the property. So whether it's your listing or you're doing an open house for another agent, interview the property on Monday, interview three properties on Monday. So this way, in case that one, no, I don't want that one. I want this one, but I do have recommendations for the seller. So I recommend a deep cleaning. I recommend a price drop. I recommend them cleaning the windows. Don't be afraid to send these recommendations over to the, the, the listing agent. You'd be surprised how many sellers will comply because they know an open house is coming and they're going to get more activity. And this is a recommendation, not from the listing agent, from a third party, from you who went through the property, who checked it out and said, okay, this is what I need. Is this house a vacant house? Do I need to bring furniture? Not like couches or anything like that, but how about a table and chair? You know, more chairs, you know, uh, you know, you want it to be inviting. You don't need a full furnished house. But you, if you want to converse with these people, if you're going to have food, you don't want them walking and eating. You want them to sit down, relax. You want them to enjoy the house. You want them to enjoy that room. Okay. So if you want a full list of what we do for an open house, please check out our coaching. Um, but now we're, so let's recap a little bit. Do you think that if I set a goal to increase my listings, from one to five per month. And if I have a detailed, what I'm going to do with my database, what I'm going to do with these cold calls when I call for sale by owners and expires. And if I'm doing weekly open houses with a manual and a system from Monday to Saturday, yeah, you're definitely getting five listing appointments. But let's say I'm not doing any of this. Let's just say I want five listings. I just sit back and I'm like, yeah, I'm just going to call people. There's no system to that. You, anybody can get lucky, but the 135, the GPS, this is what's going to take you to the next level. And But here's the thing. You're still going to evaluate this. When I do a 135, there are some 135s that we only do once, but then there's some 135s that we continuously review every six months, every 12 months, because guess what changes? Technology. By you tracking your numbers, by you tracking your system, you're going to know what works and what doesn't work. To this day, I still love the postcards. I don't know what it is. Uh, there was times where I was handwriting them out and sending them out. I have a, a method for my madness because every time I send something out, guess what I do? What a lot of agents don't do. I make phone calls. So when I put my area that I want to hit, so whether it's a five block radius or even just a hundred houses, I sold the house in that area. I sold it for 50,000 over asking. So the postcard is going to address the agenda that I have for them. Sold this property, 50,000 over asking, no contingencies. How can I help you? Or 
if I sold your house, where would you go? Two days later, I'm calling these same people because how I got the addresses, when I put them in the system, I got a name, I got a phone number, I got an email address. And I, wait, name, phone number, email address, mailing address. Postcards had the name and the mailing address. I got their phone numbers now. I give them a call. Jim, hey, it's Mike Fitzpatrick over at Keller Williams Real Estate. How are you doing today? Good. What's up, Mike? Hey, I just want to see if you got my postcard in the mail about 123 Main Street. Yeah, I did. It says you sold it for 50000 over asking. Wow. I mean, that place must have been totally remodeled. Actually, it wasn't. Uh, it was about average. So I, and that's why we started a little lower. But for a house that's fixed up, I mean, we were probably start 50000 over what, you know, what we were originally asking. Oh, really? You think I can get that much for my house? Sure, I can. Can I come out today and take a look at it? This is why people need to follow up with their marketing. Marketing, if you're doing marketing, I'm throwing stuff out there. You're just throwing stuff out there and hoping that it sticks. By you prospecting, I'm focusing on the area that I just marketed. So even though I hit 100 people, now I'm focusing on that single person. I'm not calling 100 people at one time. I'm calling that one person that I'm going to hang up, call the other person and call the other person and call the other person. And this is what's going to help you with your 135 because what happens is everything that works is in here. So this way, Mike, I'm having a problem. Do you have time to help me with my open house? I don't know what's going on. You're down the shore. You're up the uh, Poconos. What's your 135 say? What's your team 135 say? Uh, it's, are you doing all the activities? Make your agent's life easier and they'll make your life easier. Okay. All right. So that's enough for today. Uh, the 135, the GPS. Uh, tomorrow's going to be a good one. It's going to be an eye opening one. I'm not going to tell you what the topic is, but if you have any real estate questions, coaching questions, uh, anything, give me a call 267 549 2505. I'll talk to you later.